important thing I've already mentioned is action, contributions, doing something about it now whilst there is still time. I think we're talking a lot about numbers and stuff here and, and, and we should do that, but also on the emotional side, like just be kind to yourself as well. 5% of my income, um, I'm going to put towards my pension. So you can automate that to go out. Once you stop switching something off, it's becoming increasingly harder to switch it back on. Good evening, everyone. Welcome. Uh, my name is Peter Komalafe. I'm an author, a financial expert. I run a podcast and also a YouTube channel as well, uh, specifically about financial education and finances as a whole. Hi everyone, my name is Kia Commodore. I am the founder of the platform Pennies to Pounds, which I created to educate young people on personal finance. Hey everyone, thanks for taking the time out to come this evening. My name is Timmy Merriman Johnson. I run a platform called Mr. Manager and it's a financial education company for people in the UK. Hi, I am uh, Jasper Martens. Uh, I am the Chief Marketing Officer at Pension B. Um, so if you've got any Pension B related questions tonight, um, in the panel or outside, then I am the man. You can use pension calculators, right, which take your current amount of savings, the amount of money that you're putting in every month, and your projected retirement date. And you can use those calculators online, basically estimate based on things like annuity rates and so, and so on, how much income that you'd make. Pension B has its own pension um, calculator if you'd like to use that one. As Pete said, you can use it like now to start planning for where you'd like to be in a few decades time. Yeah, so the benefit of signing up to a workplace pension scheme is firstly, due to auto-enrolment, if you earn over £10,000 a year, if you're 22 or older and you join an employer, they automatically have to open one up for you. And you pay in, uh, the, the, the minimums are that you pay in um, 5%, 4% of that 5% is your contribution, 1% is tax relief, if you're, if you're a basic rate taxpayer. And then your employer has to pay in 3% as well. But that's just the minimum. There are many employers which, if you increase your contributions, will match your contributions upwards. Quick tip, if you do an internet search for pension quality mark, that actually lists the employers with the most generous DC um, defined contribution um, pension schemes as well. So a workplace pension is this vehicle that you're saving into. Yes, you can't access the money, but over the course of your career, you're saving into it, you're getting the tax relief, your employer's paying in, so by the time you come to retire, you have the aggregate of all that money in, in the pension. On payday, you sit down and you work out your budget or you work out what you're spending on, um, but I have the set amount that I'm gonna put into my savings, so for my emergency funds or anything I'm saving for, for my investments and for my pensions. By doing that, that can help you to set it up. So if you know you're gonna contribute X amount, X percentage of your income, you can say, right, I know, I don't know, 5% of my income um, I'm going to put towards my pension. So you can automate that to go out. So when you know your money's going to come in on the 28th, maybe on the 30th, that goes straight out into your pension pot. That way you don't have to think about it. You don't have to sit down and worry about it. I like to try and bring everything to a similar date. Some people have bills coming out all throughout the month and then you don't know where you're at financially. If you do it all within a couple of days of your payday, you know what money you've got to play with. Just a, an additional thought to build upon what Kia said. Three ways that you can potentially increase your amount of pension savings. If you get a bonus at work, that bonus will be taxed. But if you put the, the bonus as a one-off payment into a pension, then the tax you would have paid on it gets added back in the form of tax relief. So that's one thing. Second, potentially good time to um, save more into a pension is when you get a pay rise. Now, the cost of living is quite high at the moment, and so if you get a pay rise, that'll probably go on you know, your essentials and so on. But in hopefully in more normal times, you get a pay rise, you're already happy with the amount that you're spending on your lifestyle. And so you can just increase your contributions and keep your kind of take home pay the same. Third way is the tax relief that um, we were just speaking about, you get automatically back if you're a basic rate taxpayer. If you're a higher or additional rate taxpayer, you're actually entitled to more tax relief back. What you can do is you can fill in a self-assessment form and you can get the tax that you would have paid on those higher and additional portions of your salary. That goes back into your pension as a government contribution as well. So people are still contributing, but we definitely see a decrease. 
um, and that's not surprising. Uh, I think times have been tough for many of us. Um, but what we haven't seen is complete cancellations. And I think, and this is something that I think is really important, once you stop switching something off, it's becoming increasingly harder to switch it back on. So what we see is that a lot of our customers just dial it down until times hopefully get better. Uh, if you have increased mortgage payments because your, uh, your deal comes to an end, you have to renew, then a couple of hundred pounds sometimes a month extra will go sometime, uh, out for your, for your mortgage. Then rather than completely dialing it down, uh, completely switching off, just dial it down because it's easier to dial it back, back on. I think we're talking a lot about numbers and stuff here and, and, and we should do that, but also on the emotional side. Like, just be kind to yourself as well. Like, it's really great that Penchamese put on this event for us to all come here and learn, but like most of us weren't taught this at school. We may not have had the opportunity to learn this at home. If the reality doesn't match up to your expectations, it's like, that's fine, but then you can take action going forwards. It's nothing to be guilty about. But I literally, I first learned about investments and pensions when I was 32 years old. And the only reason why I understood, now hang on a second, that's a pension, was because I saw my dad at age 59 panic that he didn't have a pension. And at the time I was about 16, 17 years old. So 16 years later, I'm working in Kenai Wharf, and then something called a pension comes along. And the only connection, the thing that I remembered the most was my dad at 32 years old. We don't get taught any of this in school. A lot of us aren't privy to any of these conversations earlier in life. So again, be really, really kind to yourself. Don't be too freaked out. Most important thing I've already mentioned is action, contributions, doing something about it now whilst there is still time. If you are in an auto-enrollment workplace pension scheme and you've not selected how your money is invested, the chances are you're 99% going to be into a default uh, pension allocation. What that basically means is you get half of it in equities, which is where you really get growth, half of it will be in bonds. So when Timmy mentioned there that um, if you're early in the cycle, you're in your 20s or maybe your 30s, you wanna be in that equity part, you really need to ask the question from your providers at work because if you don't select anything but the default, you're going to stay there. And that doesn't necessarily mean that your money is going to be working as hard as it should be for you in the run-up to your retirement. So if you take one thing, definitely go find that out in the morning. You know, how is your workplace pension invested? Are you in the default fund? And ask them what other options you have. And I should say, as the oldest person on the panel, I have done a PensionWise appointment and I genuinely would recommend it. I did find it helpful. Um, it does set out your options. Also some really good tips about avoiding pension scams. If you do opt for drawdown and the balance of your pension stays invested, it is then at the mercy of the stock market. You do it in the hope of higher returns, but you have to be realistic about the fact that the stock market goes up and down. You know, over the long term, the trend is upwards, but it varies a lot. So one very practical tip as you are going into retirement is to make sure you've got a cash buffer, you know, a really decent chunk in savings, even one to two years income, so that if you go, if the world goes into a recession, the value of your pension pot falls, that's actually a really bad time to be making major withdrawals from investments. If you've got the cash, you can rely on that wait for your pension pot to come back up again. Jasper said something about passing your pension on, and I just wanted to mention a tip as well, which is that pensions don't actually form part of your estate for inheritance tax purposes. And so if you want to pass your pension on to whatever beneficiary, you need to fill out which beneficiaries you'd like it to go to with the pension platform. You have stories of people that are together, they're like married, they get divorced, the ex is still on the beneficiaries thing, and the pension goes to them. So that's something to check, um, like annually, or whenever you have like a major um, life milestone, like where is this money gonna go? Because it's not part of your estate.